guys, what's going on? It's Jason with JW Classic VW, and welcome back to the show in part three of the how to rebuild your air-cooled VW engine. Just got back from a cruise, had a great time at Waffles this morning, Seabrook Waffles in Pasadena. Yeah, Seabrook Waffles in Pasadena. <laughs> Super great waffles there, but I got to see an original engine, chassis, paint, everything, 1965 Volkswagen Beetle named Ruby. Stay tuned. Somewhere in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of uh, B-roll and show you guys that VW, but whew, hope you enjoy the whole washing of the engine and components and parts. Getting into some great content today, guys. We're gonna cover the plastic gauge versus micrometer question. How close are they? Somewhere in the video. <laughs> and also don't forget in the description below, all kinds of time stamps on where you wanna jump around in this video. All right, guys. Be back one second, get into this content, building the crank, hopefully get the short block together right after this. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jason and I am back. And you can see I'm wearing a different shirt than I was earlier. That's because I wanted to change into some garage worthy clothes and not destroy my good stuff that I had on for the cruising around. What are we doing today? Well, first off, we're gonna go over some plastic gauge. I've had some questions from one of my subscribers, Mike, Mike Hammer out there, this one's for you, buddy. Uh, the difference between micrometer and plastic gauge and how close are they when it comes to tolerances? When it comes to blueprinting an engine or checking every single measurement on the engine, you want to use a micrometer. Using a plastic gauge doesn't count for blueprinting, but plastic gauge is a great secondary way of checking your oil tolerances between your bearings and your journal surfaces. So we're going to check that out. This package right here, this package, this plastic gauge package will be linked down in the description below. It comes both with... Na -na 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 -na. The red and the green. So what's the difference between the red and the green plastic gauge, Jason? Well, it's the tolerance that you're trying to check. And we know that our tolerances were really close to 3,000. So we're going to go ahead and check those out and then see how close they are to actual measurements with the micrometer. And if you guys haven't seen this already, this is a micrometer set that I picked up off of Amazon too. Yeah, see that? I gauge. It's, it's pretty nice because it's all digital and uh, it does millimeters and inches, so that's super cool. If you're interested in this, check out the description below as well. After the uh, checking of the differences between plastic gauge and the micrometers, we're going to move into test fitting our bearings inside the case, mount our case in the engine stand, this engine stand, that engine stand. We'll get the case in the engine stand. We'll test fit the cam with the bearings. I've got the bearings that have the double thrust. So there's a thrust on both sides of the case. And I'll show you guys what that means. There's a certain way you gotta test fit those bearings to make sure that your cam doesn't burn up the bearings. Cause if they're too tight, that's exactly what you're gonna get. You're gonna burn up thrust. And you have to have a certain amount of thrust between uh, back and forth movement on your cam. Cool stuff. So let's move into checking this plastic gauge. I'm gonna get the crank set up so we can do this pretty quick and it's gonna be like magic. All right, guys, the crank is mounted up in my vise with the flywheel, and I've got a lint-free rag here. The crank has already been washed, as you already saw. I'm just gonna use a little bit of brake cleaner real quick to clean off the journals, because you don't want any oil. I put a little bit of uh, oil on here to keep everything from rusting up, so I'm gonna spray these down with a little bit of brake cleaner real quick, just to get any of the extra oil off. And then we'll go ahead and check the uh, the surface with the plastic gauge, the green plastic gauge. Be right back in a second after I get these cleaned off. All right, it's all cleaned off. Journals are good to go. We're gonna take the green plastic gauge and just get a little bit out of this package so that we can go ahead and put it on the journal surfaces. One, two, three, four. See, so guys, it's super thin. Plastic gauge, super thin. All right, guys, you can see the plastic gauge installed on all of the journals for the rods. 
go ahead and install the rods now torque them down and then we'll come back once I've got it all uh, ready to take a look at and inspect All right, guys, we are done with all of the rod bearings, checking them out with the plastic gauge. What I'm gonna go ahead and do now is just cut off a section of the 3000s so we can go ahead and check and see. Not that one, because it's right there. This very end down here. So we can see what our measurements are in comparison, like how close it is on each rod. So the number one rod, that was it, let's see. Just a little bit over three thousandths of a gap. Let's go ahead and check it with the plastic gauge and see kind of how it lines up. I think it's pretty close to two thousandths. So there's the two thousandths. And there's the 3000s. Yeah, I would say that we are right around the 2000s-ish mark. And if you guys remember that our oil gap clearance is supposed to be between like right around almost 3000s, so a little less than 3000s to uh, a tolerance of 6000s, so this is pretty dead on. Let's check the other ones. All right, guys, yeah, and this is the number two rod. It's right around the same. Actually, that one's a, it's like it starts off at like two thousandths and then gets a little bigger if you go into here. around 15 thousandths on that oil gap. Let's check out this one. Get closer to that two thousandths on number three rod. And the number four. Uh, I'd say it's between the 15 and 2000s. All right, guys. So there's the uh, checking of the rods using the the plastic gauge. You can see that the uh, gaps that we got with the plastic gauge were a little tight compared to some of the other ones. But uh, the real test is the fallover test. I'm not too worried about the tolerances. They're all, you know, fine as far as I'm concerned. 15 thousandths oil gap really comes into play too is the type of oil you're going to run and the uh, break-in period you could wash these bearings a little bit which means kind of like uh taking a uh a little bit of a sandpaper like an 8,000 or uh, not 8,000 like 800 to 1,000 grit 1,200 grit sandpaper and wash these to kind of mess with that bearing clearance a little bit to get a little bit more to what you want but micrometer I kind of believe that a little bit more than I do this plastic gauge and what it's showing me so we're going to go ahead and install the way it is and then move forward with the uh, the uh, checking of the bearings, the main bearings inside of the case and showing you guys how to set those up before we build out the crank. Cool, see you in a second. Okay guys, before I go ahead and test fit the main bearings in the case and put the case into the engine stand, I'm gonna go ahead and install the rods. I'm putting a little bit of uh, uh, Marvel's mystery oil on here. I don't like to use like assembly lube because that can give me some false readings and, and a, a false idea of what's going on if there's any kind of binding. Use the Marvel's because it's not as much uh, as a thick type of assembly lube. So Marvel's putting all the rods on and I'll guys show you the fallover test that I was talking about when it comes to your rods and what they should do. Be back one second with that. Guys, I'm taking a little bit of blue book time right now. Something that's super important to note when it comes to your rod assembly. 
the little throw notches on your stock type rods, these little throw notches, have a certain orientation based off the cylinder in which the rod is being installed for. So you can look right here and you can take this for reference to where those little throw notches should be. Where they're facing does matter because it can throw off the rotating assembly and how it's balanced. At the factory it was balanced with these tabs in the up position. All right guys, see you in a second. Okay guys, I got all the rods on and torqued down. There's one final step on here. There's a little tab you have to hit it with a punch and collapse the little washer on here into the tab. It's kind of like the uh, final part of torquing it. Uh, I don't really put the Loctite on these because I think it would mess with the actual stretching of this uh, bolt. So whenever you torque this down, what you're doing is actually stretching this to where it's supposed to be. So the fallover test is boom. Boom. Number one rod, you just want it to fall over. Number two, same way. If it gets stuck anywhere, then that's uh, something you want to watch out for at catching. Now, if it gets caught like a little bit, that's not a huge deal. There's also a side plate that you can check on this to see what the, uh, the, the actual gap is. Check the description below, guys. I'll go ahead and list that there. Uh, this one kind of hits the, uh, the vise a little bit. So I just go back and forth. And it's not catching. Same way with the the uh, number four rod good to go guys good to go so if you're like me i bought new bearing dowels there's a kit you can buy with five of these four that go into the main bearings and then one for the other side of the case for the main bearings you need to pay attention to the way the bearings sit inside the case with your new dowels because what happens is sometimes the new bearings, once they're torqued down and they crush, if these new dowels are too big, they'll actually cause the bearing to de deform or misform. So you look inside of your bearing cap itself and check the depth on that and see if you're going to have enough room with your new dowel pins to accommodate the space that's in there. Depending on what kind of bearings you use, you probably won't have this issue. I'm using silver line bearings on this engine case, and it's not looking like it's gonna be any kind of problem, but you never know, so you definitely wanna check that. Go ahead and put these in each one of the locations with the new bearings and see how they fit. Sometimes debris gets stuck down inside there too, so once you run these down in here, give them a little tap and make sure that they're fully seated inside of the dowel hole. Insert each one. And I'll come back through and give them a quick tap. Now you know that each one of your dowel pins is fully seated inside of its uh, hole. We can go ahead and test fit the bearings now and score them to mark them for easier installation of the crank here in a little bit. Hey guys, taking away from the video for one second to remind you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this content. Check it out below. Yeah, a little like, a little thumbs up. All right guys, don't forget to ask comments too if you're enjoying this content, which I know you are. Now, back to the video. Okay, guys, once we have your bearings all set up inside of the case, the uh, next thing to do is to score the sides of the bearings. Now, I've already done the scoring of these bearings uh, in kind of like the meantime, but I'm going to go ahead and go through the process real quick with you guys. You want to go ahead and make sure that your bearings are seated all the way down into the, the, the case half. Now... With, with this bearing right here, the uh, the center center bearing, you really don't have to worry about that. We'll take that out for now until we can actually check the uh, the oil gallery location. We were talking about that a little bit earlier, that with the oil galleries inside of the case, I'll show you real quick, the oil galleries inside of the case right here, you want to go ahead and confirm and, uh, that those line up with the actual galleries on the bearing halves. 
So sometimes they don't line up very good and you need to do a little bit of notching to get that to uh, line up the way you want it to. So back to the scoring of the, uh, the bearing sides. And the reason why we're doing this is to assist us in the installation of the crankshaft whenever we go to kind of pop it down in here and to make sure that it's seated all the way across the, uh, the uh, bearing surfaces. So we'll go ahead and leave this uh, out for right now because there's no scoring required with this. But go ahead and grab a scribe. And the one that I'm using is just uh, one of the scribes that come in the kit. This is just the 90 scribe that comes in the kit that you can pick up from Harbor Freight. Pretty cheap, I think like five bucks or less for this thing. And once you've got it seated down in all the way, we'll start with the rear main bearing. And you're just gonna go ahead and just run this across and score it. Now I do this instead of taking like a marker because sometimes that marker can kind of fade off. But once you have it scored, it's not going anywhere. Then we'll move to the one of the uh, the front bearings here. You score the same way. Just make sure that it's pressed down in there all the way, and then with the the nose bearing, the same thing as well. Now don't forget that uh, the the dowel pin location will always face the flywheel. And then you'll just score, press it down in, and then score across the face of the bearing, and then the, the back side of the bearing. And I don't think I did this one, so we're doing that right now. And then you'll see that on the face of the bearing, it's got a little score mark there, and then on the back side, you'll see the score mark right there. Very cool. Now what I like to do is take the bearing and put a little marker on there. I'm gonna turn you guys around real quick and you can face me while I'm doing that. So that now we've scored all of our bearings, we wanna go ahead and mark them with a permanent marker. I've already done that, let me show you what I've done. Give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about here. Let's see. So all of the bearing scored points, I just went ahead and hit them real quick with a uh, permanent marker just to help you see that uh, better when it comes to dropping my crank inside there. And believe me, it helps out when you're putting it in and you're turning around to get it to drop in correctly. You'll fight with that if you don't have it marked or scored. It definitely makes a difference for sure. <laughs> now we want to go ahead and test fit our cam and check the thrust on our front thrust bearings on the cam because they're always tight. I use silver line bearings, but I'm sure you'll have the same problem with whatever bearings you use to put your cam in. When you go to drop it in there first, it's super hard to turn. And I'll show you real quick. Let me go ahead and put the bearings in and then drop the cam in and kind of give you guys an idea what's going on. And we kind of dry fit the cam. You don't want to put any assembly lube on there because it's once again, just like I was talking about with a Marvel's mystery oil, you can kind of use that. Probably wouldn't be so bad. But if you use like assembly lube, it'll give you a false idea of what kind of uh, tolerances you have there. So dry fit the cam first. And then I use uh assembly lube on my lifters because it helps out inside the bores. But uh, I just used a Marvel's mystery oil when it comes to cranking down and torquing down the case halves the first time because it'll give you an idea if there's any kind of problem when it comes to tolerances or maybe you've got something pinched. You know, it can, it can happen to anybody. You know, your crank could come loose a little bit when you're doing things or it's uh, always good not to use the assembly lube because like I said, it can give you a false idea, a false reading of what's really going on. So the main thing when fitting your bearings inside for your cam is that first off, I'm using a double thrust setup, which means the front bearing on the cam is gonna have a double thrust setup. Let's see if I can get you guys focused in on this. And with this is usually used on a higher horsepower type of uh, cam setup or like straight gears on a cam. What it keeps it from doing is kind of popping out of place or, or kind of wavering. The problem on the wall here is that this wall is pretty strong. What we end up doing is sanding down the wall of the actual uh, thrust bearing here so that it's loose enough or a little bit weaker to allow you to get that back and forth movement on your cam that you need to have. Now, we're going to go ahead and test fit this dry, like I said, and then we'll see how tight it is right now. Cool. So let's go ahead and get grab our stock cam and see how it fits inside of here. 
the cam does have a, a little bit of the like the olive <laughs> the the pam that i put on there to keep it from rusting up so that's a little bit of lube but that's nothing that would cause us any kind of like total crazy it's not super tight but you see how it's turning right now i should be able to flick this and have the cam spin freely okay it's still too tight right now. We'll take a little bit of material off of the bearings and I'll be right back and show you guys what happens. Actually, I'll show you what I have to do to take the material off the bearings. It's best to use a flat, flat piece of glass and uh, I go pretty aggressive, like a 400 grit sandpaper, but uh, I don't have that. I have a piece of metal that I'm gonna use instead of glass, but or the bench, show you guys what I'm talking about. So what I've got is a piece of 16 gauge steel that works out pretty good for a flat surface. I'm using a 150 grit sandpaper. That's pretty aggressive. And you want to hold firm pressure on the side of the bearing when you're doing this. Now, I'm just gonna run it for a little while and then flip it over and do the other side. And uh, it's probably gonna be more than what you think to actually get this to where it's gonna clearance. Don't forget that uh, not only will you have to do this to this side, but you're gonna have to do it with the other side of the case when you have a double thrust bearing set up. So run this back and forth real quick and then we'll run it over and check it to see how it's fitting. Cool, I'm gonna go clean it off and then put it back in and test fit it, show you guys what we got going on. Yeah. Okay, let me show you the difference on what it looks like or what you should see on the cam. See, for one thing, it just drops in there. Ooh, nice. That's perfect. Don't forget, you wanna do the other side of the case and then, uh, and then kind of test fit your cam in there to see how it fits before you move on, but we're good to go, guys. I'm gonna skip that. You kind of know what's going on with making sure that fits in there well. Now, your back and forth movement on your cam, you want it to be very little back and forth movement, but enough to where it's gonna float. And you can check that, I believe it's 3,000. Let's check the description below on the video, guys. I will put the specifics in there on how much play you wanna kinda of have in there back and forth. Cool? All right, guys. So it's super important to make sure that the new bearings align and this oil passage in the center of the bearing here aligns with the oil going into it. And by just looking at it, I would say that it's probably pretty close, but it's best just to go ahead and throw down. I got some permanent marker here. I'm gonna throw down a good amount of permanent marker right there and then drop this down in. And you have to do these one at a time because the permanent marker will dry too fast. So let's just go ahead and put a bunch of permanent marker up on here. And I can get this off real easy with some brake clean after this, but uh, I'm just gonna put a bunch down, press the bearing and see what we got when it comes to alignment or hopefully it'll give me an idea of where it's lining up at. Let's see what we got. I think that's enough. Maybe, let's see what we got. Press it down. Ooh, put some oomphersizer into it. See if you got anything. Oh, not very much. I might have to use some actual freaking paint. Dang it. All right, guys, I got some legit paint now, so I'm definitely gonna have to use something to clean this crap off after I get done doing this, but it'll give me the idea of where the oil galleries are lining up, and that's what's super important right now. So let's just go ahead and see if we have to do any notching. Plus the paint's not gonna dry up right away. I'm gonna put a little coat of it up on here. Yeah, that definitely goes on thicker. And it's not gonna dry as fast. So there's there's always that too. <laughs> Here we go. Well, that's, that smells great. Press it down. Give it some of that oomphersizer. Now let's lift it off and see what we got. What kind of witness marks we got. Oh. So you can see that there is a little notching that it could benefit from right there. Cool, we'll let this dry so I can have that little mark there to notch, but that is awesome. So I just used my variable speed, variable speed Dremel right here. Worked out great. I went ahead and used the, a couple different uh, dies that it has inside there to make these notches in the bearings, which worked out super good. You guys can see. beans. 
Well, guys, that's going to do it for tonight. This week in this episode, quite a few things we covered, and it adds up pretty quickly when you start going through it all. And you're like, hmm, this takes a little bit longer than I thought it was going to take. <laughs> lots of good details, lots of good information, all very important when it comes to putting together one of these engines because all those little things add up to an engine that runs well and stays running well. <laughs> we went over uh, cleaning your case. We went over uh, test fitting your bearings, your main bearings and your cam bearings, making sure that your cam spins freely. Like, zoom. <laughs> you, all these things matter, guys. That's why it takes some time to explain how to build these things. And I know you guys appreciate it. Lots of new subscribers. Thank you so much, guys. Don't forget to comment below if you have questions. Any kind of information that uh, wasn't covered in here is probably in the description below too with some videos you might also be interested in. Our next episode, we're going to cover finishing the build out of the crank, mating the two case halves together, and then doing that final check. The real spin. The real spin of the, the, the crank and the cam together to see if it all works in unison and there's no binding. And then we can start working on the long block, guys. Looking forward to it. Thank you to all my subscribers. You guys are awesome. Want to be here without you. Coming really quick next week. And actually, if you guys know Mike from Good Old Mike, we did a podcast today. So if you're interested in checking that out, a little bit more information about me, which is kind of cool if you guys want to check that out, go over and subscribe to Good Old Mike. It'll be Saturday or Sunday. I'm not sure. One of those days. Thanks, guys. Once again, this is Jason from JW Classic VW, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Bye-bye.